Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. The portal is purple and we are here on Zoro's account. We're gonna have a few different viewers here today in the video. Uh, I'm going to be pulling shards for them, so let's see what we can get. It's going to be an exciting one. Uh, and Zoro, he did want me to point out, he has her in here somewhere. Last weekend, we pulled shards for him, and we got him nothing. We got him nothing. Then I think he got like one random shard from Clan Boss or something the next day. Opened it up, and who came out if not a Duchess Lilitu? So he's working on her right now. So there you go. There you go. Our bad luck for Zoro has translated into something useful. So he actually wants us to pull every single shard today. Um, six Ancients. We've got 15 Voids and one Sacred. Let's start off with the six Ancients. Let's do that. Let's see if we can get something. Probably not. It's a two times Void on right now. So we're very hopeful for the Void shards. We want to get hopefully at least two good epics out of uh, our Voids here. Um, Ancients. We're not expecting too much, but it's building up some points for that champion chase, and that's definitely going to help an epic from the Ancients, Vildrax. Um, now, before I would have said this guy's completely terrible, however, with the Hex buff, he's a bit better now. Leech on the A1, AoE Hex on the A2, and then an AoE enemy buff duration on the A3. Hmm, hmm. Now, unfortunately, his passive doesn't work against bosses. I still don't think he's good um, he could do with another little bit of a buff, to be honest, but he's got more potential now. With the Hex buff, he has more potential. Alright, let's go. We got a bunch of rares. Pretty much as expected. I'm happy we got one epic out of that. Oh, it's open for a second. I'm happy we got... Wow, that's a cool looking rare. My goodness. Uh, yeah, I'm happy for the one epic. Right, let's do our 15 voids then. Let's do this. Let's start off with the five... One pulls. Here we go. Five one pulls. Can we see something? This is pretty much your best chance to get these void epics. And void epics are game changing. Here we go. Okay. Okay. It's a Sky Touch Shaman. Actually, not top tier. Not S tier. Void legendary. But a very useful one. I actually use her in arena. Uh, a moderate amount, actually. Because she does have an AoE cleanse with block deep. That then puts block debuffs and revive on death on your team. She also has a passive that reads really weirdly. Basically what it does, though, is that it's going to heal your whole team a ton based off of how low her HP is. So the more HP she loses, she then heals people based off of that. So you build her with really high base HP, and she'll do a ton of healing. And she's an AoE A1. Um, HP in all battles aura as well. She is actually part of my Bommel team. If you haven't seen it, I built a Revive on Death team that I use now every time. To beat Bommel, uh, what was it Bommel 90 in Doom Tower Hard, the hardest version of Bommel? And she is a key part of it, both for the healing that she pumps out and also this cleanse with Revive on Death is very good for that. She's good in Arena against things like Tormund. Um, yeah, she's a solid, solid epic champion. Yeah, not the best. Uh, she's no Inquisitor Shamel, but you know, she's good. Fanatic, really cool looking rare as well. Don't think he's any good. Never seen anyone use him for anything at least. Painkeeper, actually top tier rare, don't feed this one. She is great, opens up a lot of unkillable teams with this. AoE attack, that does decent damage actually, with a nice little heal on her A2. Very good for some secret rooms as well. Double hitter that gives her some turn meter on the A1. Difficult enough to tune her in some clan boss teams. You really do have to follow those Deadwood Jedi guides say, to a T, but she is just, she's very good. Uh, great early game progression champion as well. Obviously, we're past that point. Here we go. Oh, okay, Bairdal. <laughs> it's the Bairdal. Again, definitely not <laughs> Definitely not an S tier. He's just pretty bad. He's a pretty bad epic. But he does give himself counterattack every time he takes a turn. And at the start of a round, if you have a Blood Shield accessory, he's a very consistent mischief tank. I think to make it super worthwhile, you do want to build him with damage so that he can do good damage as well. But with a 60 base resistance, with a super consistent self buffing that synergizes perfectly with Blood Shield, it's very easy to build him to do that. Right, here we go. We got the 10 pull. Let's dive in. Two Void Epics so far and 10 pulls to go. Another one, Skimphos. Not great. Uh, I've heard some of you guys saying in the comments that you like Skimphos, but I don't know. Come on. Maybe one more epic. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, there we go. Not bad. We actually got some really nice stuff. Coldheart in there. 
Dagger is a decent rare. Um, Skimfos first. I don't know. He's a weird champion. He's a weird champion. So what is he? He's an AOE attack with decreased attack that takes all debuffs from all allies, puts them on him. Then with his passive, he heals uh, based off his max HP for every debuff on him at the start of a turn. If he has four or more debuffs at the start of a turn, he gets increased attack, increased crit damage. Then his A3 uh, transfers all debuffs from him to a target enemy and steals all their turn meter if it crits. So bizarre. Decreased speed on his A1. So bizarre. He's probably very decent for Fire Knight. And I don't know. <laughs> He's just weird, right? Like maybe for Nether Spider, but you can't do the AoE unless you've really built specific things for it. Bizarre champion. I think he's quite squishy as well. He looks cool. Uh, yeah, just an interesting champ I've never seen anyone use. Now, Basher is very, very good. Basher is great. Uh, really opens up Skinwalker Faction Wars. There's some really difficult waves to get through, like um, Sathalia waves in particular, where coming in and being able to block buffs and lock them out of skills is absolutely massive. So it's this move here, his Stinging Blast, increases the cooldown of all the target skills by two turns. Now, the way this works, slightly deceptive, it's not quite as good as it sounds, uh, because obviously at the start of your turn, your cooldowns tick down one, which means that he locks, he basically locks people out of their move for one turn, all of their moves for one turn, except their A1s. Very good, actually, really strong in Arena. You build him with uh, good speed and high accuracy, and he's a mini Warlord. You know, Warlord is one of the most, if not the most, desirable PvP champion in the game for Arena. This guy does what Warlord does on a smaller scale. Um, he's good. He's very strong. Yeah, great champ. Really nice. Great for Faction Wars. Well worth grabbing. Okay, and let's finish it off with one Sacred Shard. It's going to be an epic, but can it be a legendary? Oh, no gold here today. Ah, uh, God, pitiless one. No, this guy. this guy's one of those really bad epics that hasn't ever been buffed. Ooh, each crit fills the turn meter by 5%. Hype, AoE attack. Actually, quite a bit of turn meter on that. It's not bad. And then a bit of self-healing. Wow. Super basic champion. Not much going on with him. But there we go. Not a bad start there. Got a couple of decent void epics. Couple of bad ones. Tons of tournament points. We should be well set. Well set for that champion chase event. Right, I'll be back on the next account. All right, guys, we are back on account number two. We're here on Love Bagietka's account. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, and very simply, we are going to be pulling his seven void charts here if he doesn't get uh, a legendary, which is obviously, you know, it's small chances, right? It's small chances, even that two times, we're going to pull the other shards as well. I'm trying to build up those points for that, uh, for that event. So let's go. He's really hoping for any legendary. We're pretty early on in the game here. Very early on in the game. Um... Yeah, so really anything could potentially be game-changing. Uh, and he's even looking for champions that could be good in an unkillable clan boss team. It's what he's really looking for as well. So here we go. Let's go. We're starting off with the voids. Let's get this guy something good. Early game, let's get him something good. You know what? For a rare, Kurzad isn't the worst. He has an AoE that fills his turn meter here. Then he has increased accuracy with another AoE that places the small version of decreased defense. His A1 actually does pretty good damage, and it does place decreased speed actually very consistently, very consistently. Not a bad, not a bad rare. One of the better rares. You don't need to rush out to build him by any means, but he can be decently helpful. All right, here we go. Let's go. Another rare. Some cold hearts would be good too if we get some cold hearts here. I'm sure you can never have too many cold hearts. That's my motto. All right. Some fairly chunky rares here that you I don't think you would ever use. Oh man, the rares. Stitched Beast. No, we've got three shards. Let's go. Three void shards left. Come on. Get this man an epic at least. Another really good rare is actually Seducer. Probably not super useful for much stuff, but when you start out in the game, he's actually very good. Increased defense and block debuffs for two turns on a four turn cooldown. He can open up some unkillable strategies. Funny enough. Because of that block debuffs. Um, he has an AoE decrease attack. The small version. And he has a sleep. Chance to sleep. Uh, he's got a cool thing when Temptress is on the same team. That you never really use. Just a decent champion overall though. He does decent-ish damage as well. For a rare defense based. Oh man another rare. Come on. We've got one void shard to go. Come on Plarium. Don't be like this Plarium. Give this man an epic champion. Oh Plarium. What is this? What is this Plarium? That is just, that is just cruel. 
That is just cruel. Okay, he wants us to do the ancients and the sacreds as well. <sighs> right, let's do this. Hopefully you get hopefully you get a void shard uh, over the weekend and you pull that void shard and hopefully a legendary pops out. Deserve it at this point. Here we go, an epic. Oh, God, what is this? Blood feather. Useless epic. Extra chance to crit. Look, you basically you use her to fuse Razin, and that's basically it. I think she's terrible. That's all she's good for. Uh, well, hopefully she's new, and it will save you some time for Razin. At least it's a few points towards this, this champion chase event. Adjudicator. Useless. All right, we've got the one sacred shard. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Ah, yes. Oh, okay. He was buffed recently by Stoffitz. Intriguing. Well, I'm delighted to get a legendary, that's for sure. He has a 50 bucks to 65% chance to place block active skills on his A1. That's a 50, uh, 35 bucks to 50% chance of true fear if targets a block active skills. Which is his big move? This one. Crumble. This got buffed recently. AoE attack with a 75 bucks to 100% chance of placing block active skills for two turns and also has a 75 bucks to 100% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff for two turns. So you are looking for champions for clan boss. He is definitely not a clan boss champion, but this guy is very, very good, I think, now for the arena. AoE block active skills with a decreased defense. That's a nice move. That's very, very tasty. He does have some affinity problems, of course, against a Duchess and things like that, but not bad. And he has another AoE attack that always crits against targets under block active skills and heals them by the damage inflicted. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I think this guy has crazy uh, multipliers. Uh, not multipliers. I think he's got bad multipliers, but crazy base attack. He's undead hordes, right? Uh, no, he's not. He's Night Revenant? Night Revenant. He's your first legendary there. Oh my goodness, this is Night Revenant Faction Wars just got a lot easier for you, wow. Yeah, he's got almost 1800 base attack, but I think he doesn't do that well on damage. So you can build him to nuke and also debuff a little bit if you're using him in arena. I think you could actually potentially just build him all speed so he goes right after Arbiter and blocks their skills. Uh, and tons of accuracy just to make sure he always lands this. And then this will hit just because it always crits and he's going to land this skill. So you can actually sacrifice his stuff. I'm not 100% sure. Um, he's a cool looking champ. Yeah, a cool looking champ. He used to be absolutely terrible, but he has been buffed recently. I think he's not bad. And yeah, I mean, you could even throw him in a stun set even, you know, and he's going to be, he's just going to be a beast for Faction Wars. He's got so much control there. Bit of self-sustain. Accuracy in all battles by 70. That's really good too. Yeah, this guy, not, definitely not an S tier legendary, but not bad either. Cool. All right. Great. I feel good about that. Let's go to the next account. All right, guys, here we are on account number three, and guess who it is? It's my clan leader, Face, from the Deception clan in Sin. And this is this is great, guys. You know, I've been waiting to do shard pulls on his account for a long time. Where's me? Here we go. I mean, finally, we can take over the clan, guys. This is great. I can come in uh, like this Josh guy, kick him out, get rid of him. This is brilliant. I'm absolutely loving this. Um, <laughs> we're here. We're not. We're not doing that. We're pulling some void shards. That's what we're doing. He actually has fifty nine saved up, so a good chunk here. Uh, let's pull the nine straight up, and then let's uh, let's go after that. So fifty nine shards. This is obviously a much later game account uh, than the other ones we've been on. So we can hopefully, hopefully get something good here. Hopefully we get something good. Uh, we've got lots of chances. We obviously don't care about the rares on this account. He's got them all. He's got them all. Uh, Skirmish are cute, though, but he's got them all. You know, it's, 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 we don't need these. Uh, we're looking for those epics. Perhaps, perhaps. I'm not sure if he has, like, three Inquisitors. We should actually check that. We should actually check that. Um, and obviously, you know, the Legendaries. Legendaries is where it's at right here. Or alternatively, just pulling lots of rares. Uh, that, that'd be good. He's really going to appreciate this. He's going to be like, you've logged onto my account. You, you try to take over the clan. You pull lots of rares. Never again. Cardinal. Uh, actually a really cool champion. Not going to be relevant here. Terrible A1. Does nothing. Uh, pretty terrible single target heal in her A2. But her A3 is insane. Revives all dead allies. Heals them by 25% max HP. And boosts their turn meter to max. 
This is unique, actually. So max is better than 100%, which is weird. I know. I know it's weird. Uh, but max essentially means that they will go next in the turn order. Um, so you can build some really, really cool, cheesy teams in the arena with her. You put her in a stone skin set, so she will not die. You put her in with, like, um, a squishy buff stripper, like a, an un, a relatively squishy Madame Ceres, uh, Rian the Conjurer, whatever. You put them in with someone to increase attack, and then you put in a big nuker, and you just they all die. She picks them all back up, and then they go buff strip, increase attack, nuke, and boom, you kill the enemy team. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Let's go again. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And one more. Nice epic. Towering Titan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, continuous heal on himself and a shield extra turn. So I did see some people wondering if this guy could mischief tank. Unfortunately, I think the extra turn mechanic really precludes him from doing that so i don't think this epic is really worth anything anymore like it's just not good really right 50 voids 10 pulls let's go here we go all right come on we're definitely gonna see multiple epics but can we see that gold battle sage mm -mm. another one scathix not a bad epic actually probably a bit more useful than battle sage we've got battle sage does have an aoe a1 which is cool Increase attack and cleanse. So she's not terrible for Hydra. She can put revive on death on a target ally. Not very useful. Maybe could do some mischief tanking stuff. Decent speed aura. Not a bad champion for Hydra, but not super good either. Scathix. Interesting champ. He does have a full cleanse with block debuffs and a good shield. So he's very good against the Nether Spider, Doom Tower bosses. He does have an AoE one buff steal. And he has decreased speed single target. He could maybe be decent for Hydra. Uh, but you would need to bring a mischief tank. You absolutely cannot ever have block debuff stolen. Uh, he's got a block damage on himself when his HP drops low. Kind of dangerous again for Hydra. You need to build him with lots of resistance. He does have resistance aura. He's okay. He's okay. Uh, I think you need to jump through some hoops to use him for Hydra, which is why I've not done stuff on him before. But he's okay. All right. We got Suai Firstborn. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Come on here, Plarium. Man, the voids are so slow. <laughs> They are so slow. Oh my goodness. Suai Firstborn, pretty much the only one there. I think she's kind of cool. Actually, kind of cool. She puts Weaken before attacking on her A3. Then she's an AoE decrease attack on her A2. Again, both of these have three turn cooldowns. Then she has uh, a decent-ish chance of decreased defense on her A1. Gives herself some nice buffs if she kills an enemy. So I think she's basically very good for Demon Lord Clan Boss. In a killable team, she brings you decrease attack. And she has decreased defense and weaken. Pretty nice. In a killable team, she's still pretty good because decreased defense and weaken are still good buffs. I think she does decent damage. She's certainly not the top option, right? She's not as good as like a Fane for an unkillable team, but I think she's not bad. Here we go in. Another 10. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Give my clan leader a Crisk here, game. Give him a Crisk or a Cardial or something so we can smash that Hydra even harder. Rugnar Gold Gleam. Now, this is a really, really good epic, actually. Very underrated epic. Very. Increase attack on himself. Puts weaken on the enemy. Then attacks, and he puts decreased defense. So, provides himself increased attack and places decreased defense and weaken. He is very good. Oh, and he gets, uh, like, some cooldown reduction on... Yeah, on this move, he gets cooldown reduction when he takes damage. He is very, very good in an unkillable clan boss team. So more of the traditional ones, like the man-eater teams, where he can heal himself back up and then take damage, reduce the cooldown on that. Very strong. Very strong. He provides increased attack for himself. He hits hard, brings decreased defense, weaken. Significantly better than like Razin on an unkillable team, for example. His A1 can place leech, so he can heal himself more, get more of this. You would turn off his A2 in clan boss, and that's what made him good when they added the AI setting, so we could actually disable this move. Um, that's where he became good, but he is super good. I've seen a lot of people one key ultra nightmare with a bat eater team with Rugnor in the lead. He does his aura doesn't work, but for uh, for for clan boss, but people still use it anyway. Really nice champion. Eurogrim also a really nice champion. He actually uh, compared to the previous guy, he got nerfed, but it's still really solid. 
Oh, come on. Here we go. <laughs> Another Sky Touch Shaman. All right. On this account, we're looking for the Cardial at this point. We don't want Sky Touch anymore. We want Cardial. Yorigrim, great champ, though. AoE, double poisons, plus AoE on yourself. Double continuous heal on your whole team. This is a brilliant move. It's really good. He has a trip, uh, double hitter. Excuse me. It used to be triple hitter. Now it's just a double hitter, A1. Each hit has a small chance to place poison. And then he has a good single target heal. Uh, very solid speed aura as well. 20%, really not bad. I actually use him in my Ice Golem team. I do. He's very good for Ice Golem. Um, you can, if you've got really good gear, you can build him to solo Ice Golem at the end. He can solo it because he just keeps putting out poisons and kills it with poison. Doesn't trigger revenge hits and he heals himself so much. Need lots of resistance for that and very tanky, but really good champion. He was super overpowered when he came out. He was literally better, literally way better than Bad El Kazar. So they nerfed him. And uh, obviously people then got really upset. They're like, I just don't understand. How could you nerf Yurik? How could you nerf an epic that completely outclassed one of the best and most wanted legendaries in the game? I don't get it, Plarium. It was it was a it was a trying time for all of us. Another Suai firstborn, another Beardle Fellhammer. Amazing. Alright, another Kurzad. Another Seducer. Another Cold Heart. Where's the gold? Another gold? Oh, no gold. And that's it, guys. No gold on the account, I'm afraid. We've already talked about these two jokers. What about this lad? Light Sworn. Kind of outclassed at this point, but he does have increased defense revive on death on your team. Four turn cooldown. Maybe he could do some fun stuff for Bommel, actually. I do like revive on death for Bommel. Uh, decrease attack and decrease speed on his A. You know what? If you built him with... Yeah, you could probably run this guy in Bommel. That could be kind of cool. And then he's a triple hitter A1. Yeah, triple hitter A1. That does some turn meter depletion. Pretty weak, you know, very small. But hey, it's something. Not a bad early game sort of clan boss type champion as well, right? Increased defense, decreased attack, decreased speed. Decent enough as well for Fire Knight early game. Decreased speed and the triple hitter. So yeah, he's, he's an okay champ. Obviously not relevant on this account. Uh, sorry, clan leader. Sorry, you know, you know, should <laughs> he's probably not too impressed. I mean, I should just, I should just kick myself, right? I should just, I should just remove, just kick me, just get me out of here. <laughs> oh man, we tried, we tried. All right, then for the final account for today's video, we're on Smithers 101's account right here, uh, and we're looking for a few different things. We've actually got a good chunk of void shards, 32. Uh, he's hoping for really any sort of Void Legendaries. He's pretty far into the game at this point. He's beaten a lot of the content, but he's fair, almost no Void Legendaries. So really almost anything would be good. He's also looking for epics like Genbo, Cardinal, Aboro, uh, and he'd be happy with like some Inquisitor, Shamail, Jupes. Wouldn't we all? We've got 32. Let's start pulling. Here we go. We'll do two straight up, and then we'll do three 10 pulls. Drown blow Wraith. Blo bloat Wraith? Bloat Wraith. That's a hard hard name to say. <laughs> that's all. That's about all that needs to be said about him. All right, let's go in with the 10 pulls. The final three 10 pulls to finish off today's video. Can we get a Void Legendary? We've got Legendary today. We've hit gold. But we've not hit gold with the Voids. That would be really exciting to see. Come on, let's go. Or we could pull 10 blues. This is also possible. Uh, not quite as exciting, um, though probably slightly more likely. All right, let's go in again. Here's an epic. It's a Beardle. I am pulling Beardles left, right, and center today. Come on, let's see a Void Legendary. That's what we want here, Plarium. Come on. Another epic. Oh, okay. Okay, Andrissia. This might be a new champion for him. I actually don't have Andrissia. Um, I'm not sure if she's super useful, but she's definitely interesting. So she does have a stun for one turn if they have active buffs, but she has a two turn stun if they don't have any active buffs, which is kind of cool. She does have an AoE, which can decrease enemy buffs by two turns. That is basically a full buff strip for the most part. Increases increased defense on your team. Pretty terrible A1, but then a cool passive where at the start of her turn, she's gonna put ally protection for two turns on the ally with the lowest max HP. Now I believe that does have, um, I really hate, uh, I need to talk to, to Plarium and give them feedback at the start of each turn. Uh, and then it has a cooldown that does not make sense. Just at the start of that turn, with a five turn cooldown, please. Each uh, means a different thing. But anyway, she also puts strength and increased defense on herself. So it's sort of, it's a very, very mini 
very mini Necrat. Nowhere near as good. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm not sure about her. I'm not sure. She might be decent for Arena. It's a good buff strip, but here we go. The final 10. Come on. Let's see something good here. Oh, man. I've got no faith now. My faith in, in Void Legendaries is shook. It's shook. Ugh, come on. Right at the end. The last one. Ah, no Void Legendaries today. Gosh darn it. No Void Legendaries today. Well, you can't win them all. We already saw Scathix. Broadmaw. You know what? Broadmaw, he's one of those the permanent fusions in the game. He's actually a great champ. Right? You get this guy early. He's actually great. Increased crit rate, increased speed with some turn meter fill and a three turn cooldown. You know, people rant and rave about Apothecary and all that. And Apothecary is great, but this is actually a pretty good move. It's not quite as good. It's not the full 30% increased speed, but still, it's a solid move. And that crit rate is quite nice for progressing in the early game. I think especially if you've got, um, you know, Deliana nowadays uh, from the login. The login legendary does lots of healing. Giving her that crit rate is actually quite good. He's got a decent chance to freeze on his A1. And then a double ally revive with block damage on them. Not bad at all. 33% defense and faction crypts. He's obviously amazing for Lizardman crypts. I think he's a he's a good champ, right? Not a bad speed booster for some arena stuff uh, early in the game. Great carry champion early in the game. Definitely an underrated champ. Obviously not going to be helpful for this account. There we are, guys. No Void Legendary today, unfortunately, for these viewers. Now, we didn't have an absolute ton of Void Shards. I feel like we're maybe slightly unlucky here on these last two accounts not to see one Void Legendary. But, well, there you go. Hopefully your shard pulls went well. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.